Hello there, I'm GB Vegas, and this is how to create a simple notepad app in Unity and welcome to the final tutorial of this series. So in this tutorial we're going to take a look at a little intro screen for the app which is going to be like a bit of a splash screen. We'll also look at building and how we can build as well as a couple of settings that we can tweak. Don't forget, click the subscribe button, click the bell icon as well, stay up to date with every tutorial that I have on this channel because there's loads for you guys to learn and with that in mind Let's get to work. So first things first, let's create that splash intro screen. So let's go to file and click on new scene. And the first thing we'll actually do is go to file and save scene as. So we actually basically save it because there's not going to be a lot to this scene. So let's save this as um, intro scene, nothing too important. And what we'll need to do now is go to file, build settings, and then when it loads up here, all we need to do is click on Add Open Scenes. And we need to get rid of the sample scene that comes with Unity built in. So we can just right click and remove selection. We can then close that and then design our quick little intro scene. And all I'm going to do is go to Game Object, go to UI and go to Raw Image. And I'm just going to stretch this raw image white as it is all the way across. So we set our anchor position. We've dealt with this before, we know what we're doing there. So I'm going to stretch it across and zero out the entire position. So it just basically looks like a white screen. In the middle of that white screen, I'm just going to put the name of the notepad. And I guess you can design this little intro scene however you want. It is entirely up to you. So I'm just going to quickly go there, go to text. Uh, I'm going to have the text as jet black. I'm going to have it center. And I'm going to align the text center as well and just call it Jimmy's Notepad. Probably increase the font size a little. So let's have it as 20 and that'll do the trick. So I'm going to save that scene right there. And now what we need to do is create a script which allows us to go from this scene to our actual scene. So in our scripts folder down here, right click, create C sharp script. And let's call this um, move scene. And then let's open that up in Visual Studio. So this script is not going to be too complicated at all. We are going to have to deal with a namespace, uh, but we've already dealt with that before, haven't we? Because we've dealt with the UI element of um, objects. So it's, we know what we're doing here. So top, we need to go here using Unity engine dot scene management semicolon and we're going to use something called a coroutine now the previous two scripts have just been inside um basic uh, methods and we have here remember that coroutine say text role so we're going to have to use a coroutine yet again because we're going to be using that yield so we're going to wait for the script to kind of move along in this move scene script so let's get rid of void update. We don't need it. And the annotations, because we don't need that either. And let's start by going I enumerator. And let's call it move to next. You can call it anything you want. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And yield return new wait for seconds. And I'm just going to wait for three seconds on this intro scene. After that, what we need to do is scene manager dot load scene and in brackets, the number of our scene. Now, you'll have noticed that when we go back to Unity, go to file and build settings, that number right there. That means that's the scene number. So when we add our main scene in a couple of moments time, that scene is going to become number one. And that is the scene we need to load. So back into uh, Visual Studio. We just need to put one right there. Close bracket, semicolon. Final thing to do is start that coroutine when the script starts up. So start coroutine in brackets, the name of that coroutine you've written. Move to next. Open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon, and save. So let's head back into Unity and let's go to game object because we need an object for it to actually be in. So game object, create empty, 
And let's just drag and drop that move scene onto there. Uh, console, I'm just going to clear that error out. It's not important. So what's going to happen now is when we press play, after three seconds, we'll go from this scene to our other scene, providing we add it in. So we can save that as it is now, head to our assets, go to our main app scene, and we have to do the exact same things we did with our previous one. File, build settings, and add open scenes. So now you can see it is scene number one. Save that scene, and then let's head to our intro scene and test this out. So we'll load it up. Three seconds, we'll go to our main app. There we go. Simple. So we've come this far. All the functionality works. We've got our scenes all sorted. Everything is as we'd expect it to. What do we do now to make this an app? Well, what I like to do is I like to actually test it in Windows first. So if we go to File, Build Settings, we originally had it as Android. And because the scene, or rather the project, is not that large, we could probably just kind of switch it back to PC, Mac and Linux, and then click on Build and Run. So you see what I've done there? It would be from Android or iOS or whatever you're building for. Click on Mac, PC, Linux. Click on Switch Platform. And then click on Build and Run. What that will do is it will build a Windows version of this app for you to test on your machine first. After you're happy with all that, what you need to do is make sure you do have the correct platform which you're building for selected here. Make sure that Unity logo is right next to it. So let's take a quick look at what we need to do from here. If we go to Edit, go to Preferences, and then go to External Tools right here, we need to make sure down the bottom of this list, for example, if you're building for Android, at least because I'm in Windows here, so I'm going to basically aim for Android. If you're trying to build for um, iPhone or iPad or whatever, you would need to build this on a Mac. So we have Android, the SDK, JDK and NDK, you need to make sure you have these installed on your machine. You can browse the location. If you don't have them, you can download or rather click on download and it will bring you to a place where you can actually install the necessary components you need to create these mobile games or apps. You can see I've got all mine installed, so I wouldn't have a problem. You just need to make sure that you do click download and have the path here. It is very simple to follow. It may take a couple of minutes to get that uh, sorted, but that's all you need to do to ensure that you're able to build for, in this case, Android. Next, if we go to edit, go down to uh, project settings. And what we need to do here is take a quick look at a couple of different things. The first thing we're going to take a look at is player. Now, this doesn't necessarily represent the player, for example, in a game. That's not what that means here. What this actually means is the executable player that this will be um, contained in. So, for example, if we change it to PC, you can set everything here. You can set for iOS. But because we're currently building for Android, this is what it currently is. So company name would be whatever company name you have. For me, it would be JV Unity. Product name would be the name of your app, Sim simply Jimmy's Notepad, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can create an icon for it right there. Uh, you know, you can pretty much use anything really. You could create a quick little icon in Paint or Photoshop, save it and just import it into here as a texture. For example, yeah, I guess you could <laughs> maybe use that close sign. I'll use that for now and see if it does anything. Uh, so let's get back to player. So drag and drop. That will be your icon, as you can see. Uh, down here, we have some further settings. So we've got the resolution and presentation, uh, native aspect ratio. You know, you can set everything here, default orientation. We have to make sure, because the way this app is, we need to click on portrait. Portrait is important because we don't want it to be any other way. It won't fit any other way, will it? Because that's the way we've built it. Why do we need to uh, rotate it or anything? So just make sure you have portrait selected right there. Splash image. Now, this is something which does confuse people. We've just created that splash screen, but that's not what this means. For example, if we build in Windows on a PC, that splash screen is like a little box that 
pops up before you start the game to have your selections. So you could work with some of these if you wanted to. Uh, by default, if you're in a free one, clicking on here, that's show splash screen. That's the Unity splash screen. So you may have played games in the past, or if you're familiar with Unity, that when you start it up, you have that Unity splash screen. Uh, so you've got some other options here that you can use, static splash image, for example. Uh, what I would recommend is probably playing around with some of these settings. You're never going to break anything, and if you do, you can always undo. So I'm going to click on splash image to close that up. You have some other settings. This is just stuff which kind of isn't particularly necessary at all. This is a lot of stuff if you're really getting deep into development. Uh, for a beginner, I honestly wouldn't worry about even at an, an intermediate level, I wouldn't worry about any of this at all. A lot of the default settings in Unity are pretty decent as they are. Uh, publishing settings. So this is one thing you will need to use if you are publishing to the Google Play Store, for example. You will need to create a key store. So you can create a new one and you basically put your password in, confirm the password, uh, change everything you need to. Google does actually have some documentation on what you need to do at this point and how you can use the key store to integrate it into the Play Store. So don't worry about that. If you quickly, um, you know, on Google, Key Store, Unity, you'll find tons of documentation on it, but it's quite simply just a case of creating that Key Store. Uh, XR settings in this case are not really relevant because it's just a notepad app. The same things kind of do apply for iPad and iPhone. It's all the same kind of things. You just have to make sure that your orientation is set, your name is set, your icon set, whatever. Uh, but generally, if you change something, for example, in Android, it will transfer over to other devices as well. As you can see, by default, it is on portrait. Splash image again, if you want to have that. Uh, other settings. Again, a lot of these is just kind of very... Well, it's easy to use, really, when you know what you're doing. But, of course, some of these settings are difficult. But, honestly, don't worry about them. For this app and what we intend to use it for, no problem whatsoever. So once you've got all your settings in place, you're happy with everything, you're, you know, you can tweak this a little bit more, just make sure everything is perfect. Uh, probably one final thing to actually do, just in case, because I've been caught out by this before, is if you go to your main app, press play, and make sure you do actually click on clear and save. Reason being is you don't want um, text to suddenly appear somewhere else that doesn't necessarily need to be there. So I think it's just kind of nice to have that there just in case. So what do you do now? Well, the final thing that you really need to do is back in that build settings. And once you're on Android or iOS, whatever you're building for, you just click build. You wouldn't need to click build and run because obviously it's not going to work exactly as we would want. But you would click build and that would build the file that you need. I think it's an SDK file. Um, but yeah, all you do at that point, once you have built that file, is you go onto the Google Play Store or wherever it is you're publishing. You need to follow what they tell you to do and then you upload everything that you've done. So you, when you've created that build, you would upload that because that then contains everything that the store needs to read, especially with that key store. So there are a couple of different things you could root through in the project settings. I guess it's not too important. You've got things like quality, but again, this is a notepad app. These things are not really relevant because I think essentially these are more relevant to game development than app development, but either way, feel free to play around with them. So where do you go from here once you've completed it? you have built your app and you have it published on the Play Store or wherever, that's all there is to it. Making an app is actually a lot easier than what people think. And it's there's no set way of doing it, I guess. There are probably better tools out there to make apps with. I just think it's kind of cool that Unity can do this because people associate Unity with just video game development, but it's not. It can do many things. It can create animations. You can make a little animated film in Unity if you wanted to, I guess. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, guys, you know, leave a comment below. If you've enjoyed this series, you know, please, please let me know in the comments as well. I'd love to see what you're doing as well. So please.
let me know about that. Uh, if you want to check out some video game development or just you know, small app development or anything like that, check out my channel. There is loads and loads for you guys to learn. So I hope you've enjoyed this short series. And yeah, guys, I will see you around in one of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching.